we welcome you to the Lutheran Church of Honolulu for this third Sunday of Easter. Um, I'm Vicar Bree Lloyd. I'm Pastor Jeff Lilly. And we also welcome our, our choir today and our flautist, uh, Ranzi Akob. And uh, we have our guest conductor, Tomas Ramos. Uh, so welcome to this Sunday worship. Let us begin as we listen to the prelude. Welcome to rise and body your spirit for the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth the life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life 
And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Join us for our gathering hymn. its grim demonic chorus. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join us now as we listen to the readings. A reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you kill the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that he did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The Word of the Lord. Please rise in body or spirit to welcome the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God who creates and redeems and sustains all things. Amen. On this third Sunday after of Easter, we find Jesus appearing to his disciples. Not as a spirit, not as a ghost, not as an idea, but in the flesh. And the very thing Jesus, the very first thing Jesus does as he stands among his disciples, he says, peace be with you. It's such a startling thing to say. They have just witnessed their friend be killed. They have put him in the grave. His body was missing And suddenly he is among them again, in body. And he says to them, peace be with you. Not surprisingly, they were startled and terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. And then Jesus says, and I love this scene. I've seen this in a number of different films where they've portrayed this particular moment. 
And one of my favorites is Jesus, who looks like a 1970s hippie in that movie, says to them, well, why are you afraid? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Calm, cool, collected. What I would expect the disciples to do is exactly what I would do, which is to find the nearest emergency exit and get out. But peace be with you. In the words of the church lady, it'll be just fine. And then my favorite line, I think, in the whole post-Easter cycle, in the, the line I want to concentrate on today. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? As I think about all of us in this post-Easter day, I wonder how many of us live in that interstitial space between joy and disbelieving. Years and years ago, we had an Easter morning. I don't know what happened, but you all were all here. And I said, Christ is risen! And a typical Lutheran response, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I don't know if you were tired or not paying attention or if it had been one of those years when Easter Vigil ran particularly long. I think that was probably it. I mean, even the choir. Oh, yeah. And so I had to say it again. Christ is risen, and then you awoke and said, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Maybe sometimes where we live in this post-Easter resurrection world, is in that space where we are both have joy and disbelieving. I would go so far as to say that for most of my life, that's where my faith lives. In joy and disbelieving. I think many of us, myself particularly, are caught between a faith that keeps us alive and the struggle against being overwhelmed by a world that insists that the opposite of faith is truth. Particularly around the resurrection, we struggle with the idea that we could in fact live again in the body. That Jesus, having been beaten, crucified on a cross, a sword or a spear stuck in his side, his body put away for three days, could then, after all of that, ask for some ahi. It seems impossible. Improbable. And so we as Christian people in these days are called to live in that space between joy and disbelieving. Joy at the faith which has been given us as a gift. Not just that Jesus lived again then, but Jesus, more importantly, lives now in us. That doubt, doubt might not be the enemy. Doubt might be the tool which opens us to faith over certainty. Jesus goes on to the disciples and says, Look, these are my words. And I spoke them to you when I was still with you, and they still 
apply. And then my second favorite line in the post-Easter cycle, which is why I get to preach today and you get to preach next week, is he said he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Part of faith, part of living in a post Easter, post resurrection world, is to have both our minds and our hearts opened to the possibility that the word of Jesus still applies. Again, we face the problem of a world that tells us that it's just sort of irrelevant or foolish. Jesus preaches a gospel of peace. Peace be with you. But the world wants no part of it sometimes. One of my professors once told me, there is no profit in peace. There is no profit in peace. And a prophet who preaches peace is simply not profitable. And yet the words of Jesus endure through death and resurrection. Words that call us to love one another in deep and abiding ways. Not only to love each other, but to love the stranger and the earth, and life with such fervent love that it is an irresistible. These are my words I spoke to you, Jesus says. And now 2,000 years later, we're still struggling to figure out what those words mean for us that the Messiah is to die and to, su- or to suffer death and rise on the third day and that we live in repentance and forgiveness forever. What does that mean for us these days? Where there are so many powers, so many voices speaking the contrary. So many voices seeking to convince us that not every life matters quite as much. That not every gender is as important as another. That the world is binary. How do we live as witnesses to that love when so many forces Push us to profit and not prophecy. To abandon one another when the going gets difficult. Or even more to live only for ourselves. And even worse, maybe, is a kind of approach to Christianity in which there is no room for doubt or wonder or science or fact. I said earlier that doubt is the tool that leads us to have faith over certainty. And in that faith, we experience the deep love of God and the freedom to deeply love one another. In that midst of that faith, so different than certainty, that faith of those early disciples in their joy and disbelief, in the midst of that faith, we also have the freedom to see hope despite the evidence to the contrary. And then act on it. Hope for 
gender equity and racial equality and the healing of the earth. For me and my joy and disbelief, that is my witness. That can be our witness. Because after all faith, which the disciples will come to know anew in this encounter with Jesus, faith is not what we believe in, but who we believe. Faith is who we believe. And I wonder these days, what word will we have confidence in? Peace be with you? Will we have confidence in that word? Or something else? As the disciples gathered that day, they were startled and terrified. And perhaps like us, in our joy and disbelieving as the people of God, we too can continue to be the witnesses that are sent into the world for the gospel of love and a life of faith. Welcome to join me in professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came yeah. down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we now bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness and love in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all the nations, hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. We pray especially for Arnold, the family of Anita and Melissa, Billy, Bruce, Colleen, Greg, Judy, Karen and Richard, Kathy M, Kathy S, Kavai, Keahi, Kendra, Michael, Patricia, Pomai, Rezi, William, and those we name in our hearts. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we, in this community of faith, will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise these our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. And join us now as we welcome the offering.
Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Join us now as we sing the Lord's Prayer together.
And now the blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the, the blessing of Christ, the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. A few announcements tonight. We have Compline at 7.30, 7.30 uh, online. Uh, so tune in and uh, listen to our Compline. And then an another announcement is um, in, uh, in honor of Earth Day this Saturday at 10 a.m., we're going to have a children's day in the garden. Um, we'll probably be limited. We'll be outside masked. Um, but if you have little ones and you want to bring them, uh, please let me know, vicar.bree at lchwelcome.org. We're going to learn about plants and bugs and uh, how to nourish the plants that nourish us. What about the bugs? And the bugs, too. <laughs> how to nourish the bugs. I nourish think it works. <laughs> That's all I have. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's hear the postlude.